Friday, January 22nd, and this is now on HNN. We cannot, will not let people go hungry. Just a short time ago, President Biden signed executive actions to address food and unemployment aid. The real problems now with those vouchers. New at noon, why some air travelers may be getting short changed on change fee policies. They're always talking about they don't have enough money. And in an H&N exclusive, we'll tell you why the state is losing track of thousands of parking tickets mounting to millions in uncollected fines. Straight away, fastball is a high These stories and Hank Aaron, baseball's one-time home run king, has passed away at the age of 86. A look back at his life coming up on This Is Now. We begin with a few new details to pass along. Authorities on the Valley Island have responded to an apparent shark attack in Ka'a, Nepali at around 7.45 this morning. MFD said a snorkeler was reportedly bitten by a shark about 40 yards offshore fronting the Weston Ocean Resort Villas. The shark was estimated to be 8 feet in length. The snorkeler, a 73-year-old man from California, managed to get to shore by himself. Officials said he suffered lacerations to his calf, but was reported to be in good condition. We're told there's authorities there on the scene warning beachgoers to stay out of the water. We're going to continue to follow this story and bring you any updates on our h and digital platforms. Good afternoon, I'm Mahalani Lenny Richardson, sitting side, Jonathan Salpi, and thanks for watching. This is now, we're gonna get right to the COVID numbers. The State Department of Health is reporting 132 new cases. Now, vaccination started earlier this month at the Yukio Okutsu State Veterans Home. New management also officially took over in 2021 after 27 veterans died from coronavirus last year. Today, we got an update from the new administrator at the facility. So yes, we, our vaccination process has started. Uh, we had our first clinic in July, uh, January on the 6th, where we had a little over 84% uh, of our residents that have been vaccinated and a little over 53% of our staff. Um, we do have our second clinic scheduled for um, March 5th, um, sorry, February 5th, where um, the remaining of the staff and residents are scheduled and slated to receive their vaccine. Aside from the vaccinations, any immediate changes that have taken place? So, I mean, uh, we, we have some wonderful news to share. We did uh, recently uh, receive our uh, CMS revisit uh, for our survey here at Yuki Okutsu, and they have um, determined that we are back in compliance, uh, which is wonderful news, given all that the staff have gone through here, um, all that they've experienced, you know, welcoming us, uh, new management with their um, you know, with the teamwork approach and uh, just working to ensure that our processes were as they should be to um, to reach this uh, compliance. So we're very happy to report that. I don't know if you can pinpoint one or even just a few things, but but what what happened in September? What what do you think happened in September that allowed the the, the pandemic or, or the outbreak within the veterans' home to get so bad? You know, um, at this point, it's really hard to pinpoint. Uh, as we all know. Uh, COVID, uh, it, you know, it's, it's very contagious. It's a virus that has no walls, has no limits. Uh, the processes that were in place, you know, the staff that were here, all I can say is what I do know is that the staff here are wonderful. I could not have been, uh, you know, more excited to lead such a competent team here. And the, I, I can reassure you that the processes that they have in place and the protocols that we are following currently um, you know, we are we are set for success to ensure that we keep our veterans safe here. I just want to go over a couple of things. There was a report that said uh, there were a couple of violations, uh, lacks in social distancing, hand washing. Uh, some of the staff were even reusing PPE. Have all of mm -hmm. those been addressed? Currently here, we have PPE available to us. Uh, you know, we're constantly monitoring that daily. Um, our social distancing protocols um, have, they're in place. And when the surveyor, uh, again, when she visited on January 6th, uh, was very pleased with the protocols in place. 
And that's why we are deemed to be back in compliance. New at noon, President Biden signed two executive orders that will increase access to food for the needy and allow workers to turn down jobs that may risk their health without losing unemployment benefits. Also included a clear path to a $15 an hour minimum wage for federal workers. We can not, will not let people go hungry. We cannot let people be evicted because of nothing they did themselves. They cannot watch people lose their jobs, and we have to act. We have to act now. These new signed orders are on top of the 10 executive orders signed yesterday as part of the president's national strategy for a COVID-19 response. His plan establishes a national standard for vaccine distribution and schools reopening. Around the nation, state leaders are saying they're facing shortages of the vaccine. Chris Martinez takes a look at this and other developments from across the mainland. This is a fantastic day for us. Teachers in Louisville, Kentucky received their coronavirus vaccines today. Special education teacher Tanya Moore was first in line. We can't wait to get back into the school. Um, the hope that we give to our students, the hope that they give to us, it's important. Amazon is opening a pop-up vaccination site in Seattle this weekend. And Walmart is expanding its vaccination program to seven more states, Chicago and Puerto Rico. But there's concern about lagging supply. The latest CDC data shows just 22 states and Washington, D.C. have used more than half of their received doses. It feels very contradictory that only half the doses have been used and yet cities are saying we need more. But they're both true. People over the age of 65 can now receive the vaccine here in Los Angeles, but the mayor says it may take until June before everyone in that age group can get it. That is a correct uh, calculation, an honest one, and it is the truth unless we get more vaccine. I believe we will get some, but we can't get it soon enough. Dr. Anthony Fauci estimates the U.S. will achieve herd immunity when 70 to 80 percent of Americans are vaccinated. Hopefully, that will be as we enter into the fall and end the summer. Back in Los Angeles, there are signs of hope. The seven-day average of new COVID cases in L.A. County dropped 30 percent since last week. Hospitalizations are also down 7 percent. The city is placing warning signs in some of the hardest-hit neighborhoods, reminding people to keep their guard up. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Some airlines aren't making it easy to use COVID credits. CBS travel editor Peter Greenberg is here to explain. Some of the airlines have played by the rules, and some of the airlines are doing something that I happen to think is quite disingenuous. Here's the deal. Let's say I spend $600 on an airline ticket, and the flight cancels, and the airline says, okay, Peter, here's your credit voucher for $600 to be used for a future flight, and many of the airlines have extended it through the end of 2022 out of fairness. In the old days, they didn't do that. They would only give you a voucher good from a year from the date you actually purchased the ticket, not a year from the date that you were supposed to fly. So if you purchase a ticket in March or a flight in August, your voucher is only good till the next till next March. The airlines got caught with that. They extended the voucher eligibility. So far, so good. Here comes the problem. The problem is that some airlines, United in particular, are doing this. Let's go back to my $600 example. I spent $600 on an airline ticket, and then I want to use the voucher for a flight, you know, three weeks from now, that's $480. United Airlines says fine, but we're keeping the difference. They're keeping the additional $120. That's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. A gift certificate doesn't, you know, the value, this residual value, it still belongs to you. United doesn't believe that. Other airlines are being okay about it. So in the case of United and a few other airlines that are playing that bad game, and it is a bad game, Here's how you beat them at that bad game. Find a flight that's $610, get it? And pay the $10 difference. There's no reason why they have to keep $300 of your money for something you had no, no cause in the, in the first place in doing. We've learned the state is owed millions of dollars in unpaid parking tickets, and some of the worst offenders are rental car companies. In fact, thousands of tickets cannot be traced to anyone. Our investigative reporter, Allison Blair, has the exclusive story. Records show over the past five years, one out of every five tickets issued in Hawaii has gone unpaid. That's nearly $11 million that should be in Hawaii's general fund, but isn't because the state failed to collect. 
When parking in town, it's best to feed the meter. And always pay attention to the signs. Could get expensive if you don't. Already? We had to pay, yeah. Reggie Cooey knows firsthand. One Friday, he was hit with the cost of a ticket and a tow for parking on the Alawai when he wasn't supposed to. Over $200. But records show there's a long history of people not paying what they owe. According to data from the Hawaii State Judiciary, between January 2015 and August 2020, almost 800,000 parking tickets were issued statewide. Nearly 200,000 are still unpaid. Right here. Tens of thousands of dollars is owed by a handful of repeat offenders. Records show EAN Holdings LLC, also known as Enterprise Rent-A-Car, owes more than $32,000 in unpaid tickets, while Hertz Vehicles LLC owes more than $23,000. Officials say there's another 40 grand that's still outstanding from local rental car companies. But by far the most troubling figure is $7 million worth of unpaid tickets the state says they can't link to anyone. Judiciary officials say it happens when the information on the ticket doesn't match registration records at the DMV, often due to bad handwriting, typos, or switch license plates. I think what we need to do is figure out a better system. State Rep Aaron Ling Johansson called the amount of mistakes inexcusable. He says with today's technology practices, the state's using to collect fines shouldn't be making the problem worse. That's money that the state needs to be actively going after. As for recouping fines from visitors driving rentals, Johansson says he's considering legislation that would ensure companies are notified immediately when a ticket is issued. Shoring up that link so that they can get the information faster and they can bill the offending rental car user. Unlike some states, Hawaii doesn't allow rental companies to transfer liability to those responsible for the traffic fine. In a statement, an enterprise spokesperson said more communication is vital to avoid any missed or overdue balances, adding the company had no idea it owed more than $30,000 in fines and is now in the process of paying its unpaid tickets. With looming budget cuts and furloughs, it's an issue Kui wants figured out fast. They're always talking about they don't have enough money. We also reached out to Hertz LLC multiple times about why it has more than $23,000 in outstanding fines. The company didn't answer our questions. To see how many unpaid parking tickets are owed where you live, head to our website, hawaiinewsnow.com, for a county-by-county county breakdown. Allison Blair. Hawaii News Now. Former Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard is returning to the public spotlight with her own podcast. It's unclear what kind of content she'll be producing, but she says her show will feature, quote, in-depth information, insights, and thought-provoking discussions. It'll be on platforms like YouTube and Spotify. The baseball legend known as Hammer and Hank has died. Hank Aaron's family says he passed away overnight in his sleep. Daniel Backus takes a look back at his life and legacy. Hank Aaron's biggest moment came during his 21st season in the big leagues. Aaron waiting, the outfield deep and straight away. Fastball is a high drive into deep left center field. Buckner goes back to the fence. It is gone. Aaron broke Babe Ruth's long-standing mark of 714 homers, a record that many considered unbreakable. The slugger's mother was among the fans who swarmed the field to celebrate the milestone. She raised him and her seven other children in a segregated neighborhood in Mobile, Alabama. I remember many times, you know, as a little boy growing up, that uh, uh, the Ku Klux Klan would come marching down the street for no one reason, no reason at all. My mother would tell me, "Say, son, go." Hide under the bed. In 1952, Aaron joined the Negro League's Indianapolis Clowns. He was so good, the Braves purchased his contract for $10,000 and brought him to the majors less than two years later. By his second season in Milwaukee, he was an all-star, an honor he would retain for the next two decades as one of the most feared hitters in baseball. Despite his success, Aaron became a target as he approached Babe Ruth's home run total. I got millions and millions of pieces of mail from people that were resentful simply because of the fact that who I was and they just was not ready for a black man to break that record. The hate mail and death threats didn't stop him. What a marvelous moment for the country and the world. 
A black man is getting a standing ovation in the Deep South. Hank Aaron retired as baseball's home run king in 1976. His reign ended in 2007 when Barry Bonds hit his 756th home run. Aaron said he hoped his accomplishments might inspire others to chase their dreams. Henry Lewis Aaron was 86 years old. Donya Backus, CBS News, Los Angeles. I want to switch gears here now to some potential severe weather and I want to stick with this live picture we're seeing from downtown for just a second because Mejia and I have been monitoring it and it was really shaking <laughs> a second ago. Those winds are getting fierce after a week of really severe weather we already saw earlier. While it's sunny out there, those winds are certainly picking up. Let's get it over to Guy Hoggy with an update. Aloha on this Friday, the breezy trade winds have already taken over. They'll be getting even stronger throughout the day and even stronger over the next several days. Wind advisories will likely be posted and which winds that strong. There's a possibility for some uh, spotty uh, power outages. So heads up on that. Now, there's not a whole lot of rain out there. There's still that disturbance uh, somewhat sitting over us, but you can see it's not producing a lot of rain, even though we do have some thunderstorms down to the south. We're not going to see any heavy rain for the next couple of days. So it's going to be a beautiful day today. A few passing showers, yes, favoring the windward sides. Lots of leeward sunshine expected. And there are small craft advisories posted for many parts of the state. Now, as far as the surf, it's not that big today, but it's going to be picking up by this afternoon in through tonight. A big swell is on tap for tomorrow will likely trigger high surf alerts. So maybe head high. I don't even think it's that big this morning, but expected to get bigger as the day progresses for north and west shores. And east shores will be picking up because those strong trade winds will kick up that trade wind swell, but it's going to be choppy on all east shores. So again, the trade winds will run brisk and breezy today, getting stronger tomorrow, stronger still on Sunday. And then look for increasing showers Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Keep it here on Hawaii News Now. We'll have all your severe weather updates. Here's an update for you. The barge is coming back to Waikiki. For the first time in nearly a decade, Waikiki's Kohio Beach will be getting more sand. Equipment for the nearly $4 million replenishment project will start moving in on Monday. Then the next month, the state will begin pumping 44 million pounds of sand from the ocean floor off Canoe Surf Break. The swim basin and parts of the beach will be blocked off for four months. The state tells us they plan to repeat this process every five to ten years. And you gotta check this out. Pro surfer Makua Rothman successfully rode a wave that is estimated to be at about 100 feet tall. The incredible ride, which some believe is a world record, was all caught on video. The drop-in went down at Jaws on Saturday. Here's what Rothman had to say this morning on Sunrise. This one was special. It's been a long time since Jaws has gotten really big. And um, like I told everybody else, I'm not really a prize getter, and everybody keeps talking about records and all these things. I mean, look at that wave. It's just um, to be one with the ocean. To be able to have a voice with those waves, I mean, that wave right there gave me a voice across the world to uh, further my culture. And I don't dance hula, I don't really, I cannot ole lo hava 100%. And my way of furthering my Hawaiian culture and making sure the sport of my kings and my ancestors live is catching waves like that and be able to talk about it at the end of the day. What a cool guy. Wow. Yeah, I wish I could do that. <laughs> All right, let's talk about what the internet is buzzing about and talk about a sweet job is what I've found. Check this out. The Candy Funhouse in Ontario is looking for a candyologist. That's a fancy title for someone willing to get paid for eating thousands of pieces of candy products. Hey, I'll take that. The position pays $30 per hour and is available for full timers <laughs> under a permanent contract basis. Those interested can apply uh, until February 15th. The company is called Candy Funhouse. Ooh, I volunteer. Yeah, me, me, me. Look out dentist. Seriously. Oh. What'd More you find, dentist. Right well, at least at one show, the park announced Thursday that the Festival of the Lion King show is scheduled to resume at its Animal Kingdom Park in Orlando. The show uses a cast of live actors, singers, and dancers 
Disney says it will modify the performance to allow social distancing on the stage and backstage. Audience seating will also be adjusted to allow distancing. Park officials have not said exactly when the festival of the Lion King will start again, saying only it'll be sometime over the summer. When Disney reopened its Florida parks in July, it did so without any live performances. Meanwhile, in California, sister park Disneyland remains closed without an estimated reopening date. Uh, a return of some sense of normalcy at those parks. This next story really got us talking, right? Yeah, look at this. Jessica Chastain as Tammy Faye Baker, what? the two-time Oscar-winning star, is set to star in the eyes of Tammy Faye as the singing televangelist. And you know with those memorable eyelashes. Yeah, that was some eye makeup. <laughs> Andrew Garfield co-stars as Jim Baker. The film is due in theaters September 24th. I can't wait to see her transformation. I love me a good bio flick. <laughs> it reminds me, you know, we saw I, Tanya a few years back. Yeah. I think this is another great topic to explore. So Stephanie Lum has her podcast, Mothership, and this week the topic is a young inventor from here on the island that struck it big with a, a big company. Here, I'll play out a little bit of it. Wait, what did she just say? Kind of did like the that like excited, happy scream thing. <laughs> Anything you want to achieve or do, my advice on anything is just to go for it and try because you really never know until you try. So you're wondering, I'm sure, what is 12-year-old Cassidy Crawley's invention? Well, it's being sold in more than 4,000 U.S. stores and online. She invented a thing called Baby Tune, which is a baby teether and a spoon combined. Ooh! Yeah, right? Smart. So smart. It's Love a new invention. item you gotta buy if you're yeah. a new mom. Yeah, add that to the baby registry, right? All right, so there's some big Super Bowl news, right, Mahal? Yeah, this year, about a third of the fans attending the Super Bowl will be healthcare workers. The tickets, gifts from the NFL, the game is now just two weeks away, and preparations are in full swing. Michael George takes us to Florida. Crews are setting up the Super Bowl experience in Tampa ahead of Super Bowl 55 next month. The interactive theme park, where visitors can play games and virtually meet players, will be free this year for the first time ever. Also free, Super Bowl tickets for about 7,500 healthcare workers from around the country. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell surprised medical staff at Sarasota Memorial Hospital. I want to Thank you, Roger. invite each member of your team to be our guest at the Super Bowl. <laughs> Each NFL team also gets to invite a handful of vaccinated healthcare heroes from their hometowns. You're going to go to the Super Bowl. Are you kidding? Yes. The Green Bay Packers, who are one win away from the Super Bowl, picked infectious disease doctor Michael Landrum. I've been a football fan ever since I was a kid. It's kind of surreal. Um, because while I'm down there, I still know that there will be people up here in the hospital and my colleagues here will still be at their bedside taking care of them. The pandemic is also limiting how many tickets will be sold. Only about a third of available seats. That worried Super Bowl super fan Tom Henschel, who's attended every Super Bowl for the last 54 years. This week, he got an email from the NFL offering him the chance to buy a pair of tickets to the big game. Somebody definitely uh, looked it up for us. I didn't think it let me down. Henschel lives just 15 minutes from the stadium, and he's thrilled to keep his super streak alive. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Well, a lot of people will be missing out on their tickets, but what a group of well-deserving people that are going to get to go. The reaction on their faces when they learned that they were getting those tickets literally made my eyes water oh. up. It was so amazing. And they deserve it, too. The healthcare workers and, yeah, some guy who's went every single year. Yeah. That's amazing. That's going to do it for This Is Now on this Aloha Friday. Happy TGIF. Aloha. We'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend.